Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for today, Thursday. I'm going to be using the order of service on page 123, the prayer book, if you're wanting to follow our Thursday morning, morning prayer. Give us today our daily bread. Ho mai ki amato aene, e taro mo mato mo teneira. None of us lives and none of us dies for ourselves alone. Living or dying, we belong to the Lord. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Those who come to you will never be hungry, and those who believe in you will never thirst. You are the living bread from heaven. The bread from you, the bread you give is your own flesh and you give it for the life of the world. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood live in you and you in them. And for your flesh is the food we need and your blood is our salvation. All who eat your flesh and drink your blood have eternal life. So let us look to Jesus in the wilderness, breaking bread and feeding the multitude. Etivano, spare sowing and meagre reaping, but if we're generous, bountiful will be, will be the harvest. So let us give what we can, not with regret, nor from a sense of duty, for God loves a cheerful giver. And when we help others, we will not just meet their needs, we will unleash a flood of gratitude to God. Many will give glory to God for our loyalty to the gospel and for our generosity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Our reading this morning is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 15. So certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, and the issue was circumcised, According to the customs taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed, along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they travelled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. And when they came to Jerusalem, they, welcomed, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders to whom they reported everything that God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, The Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders considered this question and after much discussion Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. He did not discriminate between us and, he, and them, but he purified their hearts by faith. Now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that we are saved, just as they are. The whole assembly became silent as they listened to Barnabas and Paul telling about the signs and wonders God had done among the Gentiles through them. When they finished, James spoke up. Brothers, he said to them, listen to me. Simon, who has described to us how God first intervened to choose a people for his name from the Gentiles, the words of the prophets are in agreement with us as it is written. After this I will return and rebuild David's fallen tent. Its ruins I will rebuild and I will restore it. That the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who bear my name. Says, says the Lord who does these things. 
things known from, known from long ago. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write to them, telling them to abstain from food polluted by idols, from sexual morality, and the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. For the law of Moses has been preached in every city from the earliest times and is read in the synagogues on every Sabbath. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Just take some time now to reflect on that reading, reminding ourselves that God's grace comes to call us to salvation, not burdened down with lots of rules and regulations, but with God's grace. So may we take comfort and strength in that today, that God calls us as we are. So now we pray, and uh, we just pray for the needs of the world and the community and for our lives and the people around us. Caring God, we thank you for all your gifts in creation. We thank you for our world and We thank you that the heavens tell of your glory. We thank you for our land and its beauty and its resources. We thank you for the rich heritage that we enjoy. We pray for those whose decisions, who make decisions about the resources of the earth. Help us corporately to use your gifts responsibly. And we give you thanks for those who work on the land, in the sea, in the city, and in industry, that all may enjoy the fruits of their labours and marvel at your creation. And we give you thanks for artists and scientists and visionaries, that through their work we may see creation afresh. We thank you, dear God, for giving us life. We give thanks for all those who enrich our experience. And today we pray for all those who are deprived of fullness of life. We particularly pray for those who have lost their work over this time, for those who are unable to find work, for those who are unable to provide all that their family needs particularly food and and housing. For those who are the subject of domestic violence and abuse. So for all these people, we ask your grace and your mercy to be with them. Show us how we as a church can support these people. And we give thanks for those in politics and medical science and social and relief work. For all who seek to bring life to others. We pray, gracious God, for the ministry of this cathedral parish as we prepare for the memorial service for the Queen on Monday. Pray for your grace for all those involved in the service and for the huge amount of preparation required. But we pray for your grace too to see the the needs of those around us in this season and this memorial service does not distract us from the needs of others. So we pray you would give us reverence for life in your world. And we give you thanks for your redeeming love. We pray that your word and your sacrament may strengthen us to love as you love us. So we pray, gracious God, Jesus, creator, redeemer and giver of life, bring us new life. Renew us. Holy Spirit, would you strengthen 
and guide us. God, you shape our dreams as, and as you put, as we put our trust in you, may our hopes and desires be yours and may you, and may, let's do this one again. God, you shape our dreams as we put our trust in you. May your hopes and desires be ours and we your expectant people. Amen. And as Christ teaches us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Look kindly on our world, O Lord, as we suffer and struggle with one another. Look kindly on your church, driven by the same necessity. And may the light we have seen in Jesus illuminate and brighten all the world. Amen. May God be with you and bless you in this day.